Are you hurt badly, sir? No, I'm just shaken up a little. Is he... Still alive, but unconscious. Here, help me get him to the car. We must get him to the police hospital. At once. <laughs> Jury's indicted Mortensen. Go on, what else? The indictment was based on evidence mailed to the district attorney by the now famous Green Hornet. The district attorney expects to uncover the higher ups for whom the insurance broker acted. They know you at the county jail as an attorney. Get to Mortensen and keep him quiet. That'll be easy. Mortensen thinks quite a lot of his wife and that boy of his. When you get through with Mortensen, go out to flying school and check with Bartlett on those aviation policies. Mr. Jenks, but I can't remember when. You've had plenty of training under a good instructor. Well, I guess I lost my head, Mr. Peebles. <laughs> sure was a bum landing. Listen, buddy, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. <laughs> Every time you bring in a story, I can feel the circulation going down. You are through the papers. I can already see the Bartlett Flying School camping on our doorstep to cancel their advertising contracts. <laughs> Jenks antagonizing our advertisers again, Miss Case? Say, Mr. Reed, I was out of the Bartlett Field this morning, and believe me, that place ought to be investigated. Why? Why, they've had four fatal crack-ups. They don't give their students enough training before sending them out for solo flying. What's the idea? Well, the students pay for a training course which ends with their first solo. Believe me, they rush them through. Well, government regulations require a student to have eight hours in dual control machine before being allowed to solo. Sure they do, but with the school keeping the records, who's to know whether they have eight hours or five or six? Well, the students should know. Oh, all they care about is soloing as soon as possible and getting their certificate. 
Tell you, Mr. Reed, that's a racket of some kind. I'll go out there and take a look at it myself. Okay. You ain't figuring to do any flying out at this Bartlett place, are you, Reed? No, I just thought I'd go out and see how a flying school was run. Maybe you'd like to go up, Michael. <laughs> Not me. You couldn't get me up in one of them things if all the snakes in Ireland was after me. <laughs> well, airplanes are safer than autos. Oh, yeah? Well, take a look at that one. The crash must have killed him, isn't it? Maybe he inhaled the flames. No, I don't think so. There's something funny about that fire. Those flames didn't come from gas. But if there was no gasoline in there, what caused the fire? I wish I knew. Get a blanket from the car. Have you any proof of that? She wasn't Dick Barber's fiance. I was. But Miss Weaver, our reporter, was informed by officials of the flying school that Miss Josephine Weaver Allen was his fiance. They lied. Dick and I were secretly engaged for months. Well, where does this Josephine Weaver Allen come in? I was told at the school that they had named her as Dick's beneficiary. And your name is simply Josephine Weaver? Yes. I think I can help you, Miss Weaver. Only on one condition. What's that? That you stay out of the picture and don't say anything to anybody about this. I won't, Mr. Reed. Thank you. Miss Case, get hold of Axford for me. Tell him I want him to do some undercover work at the flying school. Anything else, Mr. Reed? Yes, get Barbara on the phone and make an appointment for me. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Bartlett. Reliable instructors, government-inspected equipment, and adequate training periods. How do you account for those five fatal accidents? In flying an airplane, you haven't much time to make decisions. And you must be right the first time. Well, it's impossible to tell whether a student has that judgment in an emergency until he's gone up in the plane alone. Exactly. Well, that puts a different light on those crashes. You see, I was interested in one of the boys that crashed. Is that so? Which one? Dick Barber. I was also surprised to learn that his fiancée was this Miss Allen. I understood he was engaged to Josephine Weaver. I definitely know that Barber designated Miss Allen as his beneficiary. I wonder if I could see Barber's original application for insurance. You have it in your office, haven't you? Mm, no, that's on file with the insurance company. Oh, yes, of course. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Barlett. You've been uh, much more help to me than you realize. Did Bartlett find out the real reason for Reed's interest in the Barber crash? No. Reed seemed to know that Josephine Weaver was Barbara's fiance and not Josephine Weaver Allen. I'll get the Allen girl out of town at once. Right, I'll put Dean and Corey on the job. What's our destination tonight, Mr. Britt? We're going to call on a young lady, a Miss Josephine Weaver Allen. What do you want? Who are you? The Green Hornet. What do you want here? I want to know why you're posing as Dick Barber's fiance. Because I was engaged to him. You didn't even know him. You're going to have a hard time proving that. I'm not going to try. You're going to prove it to the district attorney. That's what you think. All right, listen to this. I've talked to Bartlett. You saw Phil Bartlett? Yes. Dick Barber named Josephine Weaver as his beneficiary. Your name was substituted on the application and you collected $10,000 from the insurance company. 
Did Phil Bartlett tell you that? I want that money. The double-crossing rat. Did he tell you I had to kick back with 9,500 of it? To whom did you give the 9,500? For whom were you working? All right. I'll really give you the lowdown. But first, we've got to get out of here. You're telling me here and now. But they're coming for me to take me out of town. We've, we've got to move fast. Are you telling the truth? Well, what do you suppose I'm packing for? You've got to get me away from here so they can't find me. Take her to the car. She's trying to make a getaway. Able to drive? Two men grabbed a girl. Yes, I saw them. We've got to catch them. Hey, Cork, isn't that the car of the Green Hornet? Isn't after us. We'll soon find out. Swing around the next corner. Our only chance is to keep turning corners. Step on it. The Green Hornet. After it, Joel. Too late, Cato. The girl is dead. Josephine Weaver Allen, Dick Barber's fiance, was killed last night. Really? Yes, the car she was riding in was run down by the car of the Green Hornet. Who's the authority for that statement? The police. They came up just as the Hornet car was making its getaway. Here comes Axford. He'll find out all about it for us. Sure, and I have found out all about it. You found out all about what? The Bartlett Flying School. I sent young Tanner out there to take up a course as a student flyer. What did he find out? He overheard a couple of mechanics talking. One of them says to the other, Gilpin's going up for his first night solo flight tonight, and the boss said to have 28-24 on the line near Hangar 2 at 10 o'clock, service special. Was that all he found out? It was not. The other mechanic says, boy, they're sure crowding it. It was only the other day that Dick Barber's plane was service special, and laddie, it was Dick Barber's plane we saw crash. So it was. Go to the cashier and get a check for Tanner, Michael. Oh, but Reed! This special service means murder. Go on, go on. You've been reading detective stories, Michael. Yes, sir, but... Uh, oh, for that... I beg to the boy as low as his mind. I 
get to the field, Cato. Silence the motor and pull in behind hangar number two. I want to take a look at plane 2824. You all set, Pete? Yep. All set to go. I gave a special service job, Gilpin. Ah, oh, gee, thanks, Pete. You know, this flight means a lot to me. It means a lot to the school, too. You know, turning out good flyers. <laughs> when I make this flight, I'll be through training. I can get a job. See, I'll need a job, too. I spent every dime I had on this course. But once I'm working, everything will be Jake. Say, I can even get married, Pete. I suppose I'm wasting my time giving you advice. A flyer ain't got no business fooling with women. Oh, but this one's different, Pete. She's... Yeah, I know. Warm up your motor about five minutes before you take off. Hello, Mr. Bartlett, sir. This is Pete out at the field. Gilpin's warming up his motor to take off in five minutes. Yes, sir. 2824 has been specially serviced, sir. Don't worry, Mr. Bartlett, sir. Every... Excuse me. You haven't? No, sir. The bro I gave him will leave him paralyzed for precisely 30 minutes. You're a marvel. Mr. Bartlett, sir, this is Pete again. You gotta get out here quick. Now I can't tell you over the phone, but you gotta get out here. You're hangar number two, and hurry. He said he'd be here in about 10 minutes. We've got to... Gilpin must be in his plane now. I must stop him from taking off. You hide behind that desk. Bartlett comes, you know what to do. Hey, Gilpin, you're not going up in that ship. Who says I'm not? Green Hornet, huh? What do you want? I want you to stay out of that plane. Like fun, I will. I got a nice solo to do, and I'm going to make it. Business is yours anyway. I haven't time to explain now, but you're not going up in that ship. No? Gilpin has nerve. First one that hasn't been afraid of the Green Hornet. Only those with a guilty conscience fear the Green Hornet, sir. I hated to guess him, but it was the only way I could save him. I left him alongside the hangar. He'll be as good as new in an hour. Bartlett. Pete. Pete, where are you? Hold it, Bartlett. The Green Hornet. What are you doing here? I want to have a little talk with you. That's why I phoned you. So it was you tricked me out here. Well, what do you want? What's wrong with plane 2824? Answer me. What's wrong with plane 2824? There's nothing wrong with it. You're lying, Bartlett. You know there's something wrong with it. What is it? Nothing's wrong with it, I tell you. What is this all about, anyway? Time up. Excuse, please. Bring him on out. For the last time, Bartlett, what's wrong with this plane? Nothing, I tell you. All right. What are you going to do? Take you for a little flight. Not in this plane. Oh, yes, I am. See how 2824 flies with its special service. Get this plane back on the ground. Why? It's in perfect flying order. No, it's not. It's suicide to fly this ship. Listen, if you set this ship down, I'll tell you what's wrong with it. You tell me before I set it down. We're staying up here until I find out. Put it into a glide and land. The gas is gone. 
That's the special service. Insufficient gas. Get it down. Get it down. There's an incendiary bomb hidden somewhere in the plane. It's under the fire. That's your racket, huh? Well, you can collect insurance on both the plane and pilot. <laughs> I'm not forced to. I'm just one of the syndicates. Who's the head of it? Listen. You think you're going to get some information and then bail out. But it won't work. If, if you'll untie me and let me bail out with you, I'll tell you what you want to know. All right. There. Now tell me who's the head of this. Wouldn't you like to... Chance. Now tell me who's the head of this.